So this is a photograph of the waterfall in Swaledale, one of the nicest of uh, the dales in the Yorkshire Dales, and uh, taken yesterday with a polarizer on and an ND font just covering the sky here. The sky got a bit featureless, but I still wanted to retain some detail, so I put the grad on, and hopefully we can uh, drag a little bit out of uh, a little bit of detail out with a grad tool. So let's get going. Um, Obviously, because we've got something really bright and something really bright in the sky and there, relatively the rest of it's quite dark, so we're going to be dragging up the shadows and pulling down the highlights. So let's start by taking the highlights down, see what that does instantly, brings back that detail which I thought I'd lost. But it also makes the waterfall quite dark, so we'll also pull up the shadows a little bit, well maybe a lot actually. So we can now see a little bit more detail in the rocks in the foreground and everything. So we've got what almost looks like a HDR going on here. A couple of options now. We can either brighten the whole thing up with the exposure, which I think I might do. I'm going to put my finger on the Alt key and then just drag to the right. Probably too much there. Don't want really to look looking too insipid. So we've We've probably added about a stop of light onto that. I'm going to increase the contrast. I want quite a punchy shot, so increase the whites. And I'll, again, click on the Alt key and drag the whites to the right. And then do the same with the blacks. I don't think this will need to go far before we've got some black clipping. So, very quickly there, we've gone from the sort of flat basic photo to something which has got a lot of detail. I mean, you couldn't really make out these trees earlier, could you? These boulders were quite dark. Well, boulders are more like pebbles, aren't they? So, to add to the punchiness of it, a bit of clarity never never fails to add a bit of punch to a landscape. Uh, maybe a bit of vibrance, just to increase the saturation of these lovely colours over there. Okay, so that's, that's the basic look of it. Now, I think what I might do is make these bits of foliage over here a little bit brighter by using the luminance. And I'm going to click on the direct tool. Go and click on the foliage and drag the mouse up a little bit. You notice it just makes. Just click around on various bits and bobs. So all that foliage, it affects everywhere. Just a little bit brighter. And maybe these pebbles here at the front. So that gives it quite a nice look. Um, it might have brightened this area here a little bit too much. So we'll see if we can pull that down with the highlights. I don't think we've got anything burnt out on it. So maybe it's just what it looks like on the monitor. Um, is it level? Well, we can get the crop tool up. And the thing is, it's quite a V shape what we're looking at here. It's not like um, you're looking across a lake where you'd expect it to be level. There's a bit of perspective going on. So that this far bit here is a long way away. This corner here is actually quite close uh, and that's a long way away. So though it might look like the two lines, are, if we leveled it with this line here, that side looks like it's on a bit of a hill and vice versa. That looks pretty damn wrong, doesn't it actually? So I'm just going to maybe level it with this bit here. But I don't think there's any real correct level on this one because of that reason. Um, obviously if it, if it was a sea or a big pond or a lake or something like that and it looked a bit cockeyed, you know, <laughs> I'd, I'd be straining it up based on the horizon. So um, I'm just going to bring out these rocks a little bit. A bit they're quite a a nice focal point of this shot. So, just draw the lasso around it, invert mask, so it's going to affect whatever's inside there. And then I'm going to go straight to the preset clarity, which just resets everything else and just add a little bit of clarity and sharpness. So, those rocks, when printed or seen on a big screen, will look very, very punchy. Maybe a bit of contrast there. Let's see what we can do with this, this area here, the actual water. Again, invert mask. Let's go to sharpness. So this just adds 
sharpness into there to begin with. Let's draw the clarity up a little bit. Should we have a bit of saturation? No, the water goes blue actually, so we don't want to make it too blue. Maybe up the shadows a bit. Contrast. Because it's a focal point, you want to really draw the eye to it. And finally, how about this foliage over here? So again, invert mask. I think again sharpness and saturation. Let's make it really, really nice bright colours. Uh, maybe shadows. No, we don't want it too bright. If you go too bright, it'll look start to look a little bit fake. You, know, you get those HDR shots where the ground is actually a lot brighter than the sky, which never really happens in. You know, reality, unless you, um, no, it just doesn't happen much. Does it? Okay, so let's just do the old uh, create virtual copy and see what the original shot was like. So, Control Shift and R resets it. So we started there, and we ended there. I think the whites might be a bit bright, so I'm just going to drag that down. So, from what looked like a very flat dead looking photograph you can get something quite punchy now this is one of the reasons you should never really give away your raw files if you're um, shooting weddings or landscapes or anything for clients because the start point of the shot could be like that and then you give it to someone else to edit they may not know that you can reach this point so if you are being asked by people to give away your raw files you may be stabbing yourself in the foot in a big way because they're going to get these photos here and think, Jesus, this guy doesn't know what they're doing. You know, it's terrible. This photograph was created, this raw file was created, so we retain detail there and there. I knew before I started that the surrounding areas are going to be underexposed, but I also knew that with a raw file from my 5D Mark III, you can actually drag lots of detail out of it so if um, you are being asked to give raw files away just you know be a bit careful because you know half the skill of creating great photos is the processing anyway that's a soapbox moment over and done with I hope that uh, edit just showed you what you can do using the basic sliders and the elliptical radial filter thanks for watching